So next question I have for you, right? Let's say somebody's in their 20s. I know this is going to be a really broad paint stroke of a question. Um, but somebody in their 20s, you know, they just – they have no knowledge, right? Which is – the more – the older I get even, uh, and I'm not nearly as clued in as you, obviously, but the more I realize just lack of basic knowledge there is with financial advice and even – you know, just kind of basic stuff, right? Like living within your means. But what do you think the, and again, this is broad question, but somebody in their twenties, maybe they're in the middle of college, maybe they just started the career, but what's kind of the best advice you would have? Um, yeah. For that kind of person. Mm -hmm. It's a really good question. Um, and we get asked a lot. We get asked I by a lot you of, too. you yeah. know, we get asked by the most are parents of 20 somethings who see their kids squandering around and you know, mm -hmm. trying to figure things out. Yeah. Um, first and foremost is you need to make a decision on how you're going to approach debt, right? What is your philosophy on your current and future debt going to be? Because it will mm -hmm. shape the way you manage almost all of the rest of your decisions. For example, mm -hmm. right? If you're listening to this and you have a student loan, that's 40 to $65,000, which is a lot of people that listen to this. And in, in, I would guess, you have mm -hmm. to decide, do I want to live with that minimum payment until I'm in my 40s or 50s? Or do I want to get rid of it and move on with my cash flow plan with that mm -hmm. not being a part of my life? Because the, the approach that you will take with your money that's coming in, your income, will be drastically mm -hmm. different. And the way you do your other financial decisions will be totally shaped by that, right? You're either going to take that thousand or fifteen hundred dollars you have per month that's unspoken for, not not a part of your bills, and put every mm -hmm. dollar of it on your student loan to pay it off in the next eighteen to twenty four months, mm -hmm. or you're not going to do that, and you're just going to have a two hundred and ninety five dollar payment every month until you're forty seven years old, right? Mm -hmm. Either I don't sure. care what conclusion people come to. I have an opinion on that of which way they should go, but someone has to make that decision first. How am I going to approach debt, current debt, and then what do I see as future debt that's coming down the pipeline, usually related to real estate or additional education that they're going to go after, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's the first thing is to kind of develop a philosophy. And if you can't on your own, get some help developing a philosophy from people who have already gone through the, that stage. If you mm -hmm. want to buy a house, talk to people who own homes and get some details <laughs> on what it actually is like to own a home with X amount of debt. Like, yeah, $400,000 mm -hmm. mortgage at 2.75% interest X, you know, equals this payment. Oh, but then we have property taxes and all oh, the homeowners association do. And, oh, and you know what? My appliance is broke 18 months after yeah. I moved in. And guess what? It's not the superintendent's fault. You know what I mean? Right. I just have to replace mm -hmm. them with my own money, right? So you got to understand yeah. kind of like what that looks like and then start building a plan so that that fits into your lifestyle that you would like to have. Mm -hmm. And once you do that, build a philosophy around those kind of shorter term items. You want to think of your financial plan like a timeline. Shorter term decision making has to come first. Otherwise, longer term decision making will never stick. Because Interesting. should someone in their 20s be saving at least 10% of their income, gross income before taxes for retirement? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely, mm -hmm. they should. If they do that, their retirement is going to be on track, period, exclamation point. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. should you be doing that if you have other priorities that are more important, like paying off your student loans or saving for that dream home that you want to buy by the time you're 32? Maybe not. Mm -hmm. Right? Maybe it can wait a little bit or maybe it can be tamped down to a lower level, mm -hmm. but that's why the decision-making has to kind of go timeline left to right, um, as opposed to just going, I'm going to follow this philosophy rubber stamp and, mm -hmm. and just start doing it. So decision-making on debt, current and future, and how you're going to approach that, getting educated mm -hmm. on what it's going to be like if you don't really know, or if numbers aren't as meaningful to you, like looking at online calculators and like, hey, if I had a $400,000 mortgage, like what would that actually be? Like that's helpful for some right. people, but for other people, they just need to talk to their friend who has a $400,000 mortgage, just ask them. Right. Mm -hmm. And then once you kind of get that philosophy figured out, then you can start to shape your long-term decision-making. And there are some easy, easy metrics by which you can mm -hmm. measure your long-term plan, like the percentage of your income that you're saving and investing, how much of your money right. is going into stuff that's going down in value, AKA like, 
real property stuff and anything with an engine in it mm -hmm. versus how much of your money is going into bills and things that are going up in value over time, which would be investments and real estate for the most part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And those those kind of metrics will help kind of tell the story of how healthy a financial plan is, no matter what age you if are. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to check out the Standing Still podcast, both here on YouTube and wherever else you listen to podcasts.